first of all in Sahih Muslim whoever goes to a fortune teller and asks him about something and believes him his prayer will not be accepted for 40 days there is another wording of this hadith which says that the one that doesn't believe him his prayer will be accepted for 40 days and whoever believes in what he said he has disbelieved in what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said not from us are those people who believe in omens or have omens read for them so we say that the conclusion to this is that if you were to go to a fortune teller or a palm reader or a horoscope writer or a TV you know sort of psychic or mystic person or whatever it may be your prayer would not be accepted for 40 days and if you believed in them you would leave Islam and the Prophet ﷺ indicated that fortune telling is a branch of magic it is used in the same way now we've already discussed in the module on the jinn the way that the jinn climb on top of each other and they pass the news down they pass it to the fortune teller who mixes and they mix a hundred lies with it and the fortune teller is believed for the one truth that is heard from the heavens and this last hadith affirms for us that the Prophet wasallam attached the same ruling to the one who goes to the magician and the one who performs the magic and the same ruling as to the one who goes to the fortune teller and the one who commits fortune telling those people who read omens for people as in they tell you oh if this cat came here if you did this under a ladder if this thing happened then this is going to happen to you we're going to show you some examples of fortune telling and this is going to lead us into the issue of amulets and talismans and magical symbolism so you see here the reading of the palm the reading of the coffee cup the reading of the tea leaves again we see people who appear in the guise of practicing Muslims and they come out dressed up as practicing Muslims and they say I can tell what's wrong with you drink the coffee cup let me have a look in the cup I'll tell you whether you have a jinn or not I'll tell you whether you have magic or not let me look at the tea leaves let me look at your palm let me measure your clothing that's very common especially amongst the Bengali community that you will go to a so-called scholar who will ask for you to bring some clothing that has touched you for example your socks underwear vest for the ladies the hijab something that has been directly in contact with you and your skin and they will take it and they will read some words you will not understand and then they will measure it and if it gets longer they will tell you it's this and if it gets shorter they will tell you the problem is this this is kahana this is sorcery and fortune telling the worst thing about these people is that people go to them for information do I have a problem or do I not have a problem and I can tell you this if you don't have a problem when you go to them wallahi you will have a problem by the time you leave because these are people who profit and benefit from your misery and your suffering so when you go and you're perfectly healthy you know I had a nightmare and my kids woke up at night screaming and I don't know is something wrong with me if you didn't have something wrong with you he'll make sure you have something wrong with you by the time you leave he's like the mechanic who, when you go and say is there anything wrong with my car he breaks something on your car and then says yes you have something wrong with your car now that doesn't mean that these people always lie sometimes they tell the truth we heard the hadith of a, one truth and a hundred lies they tell the truth sometimes they will tell you you have a jinn with you and you do have a jinn with you sometimes they will tell you have magic and you do have magic done on you but likewise if you come and you don't have a problem these people don't let you go and say there's nothing wrong you know you have two extremes you have these guys there's, they never let you leave without something being wrong and on the other side you have those guys who everything is a mental illness and there will never be anything wrong with you you know somebody comes and literally flies up and down attaches themselves to the ceiling spinning around and screaming I am the shaitan I am the shaitan goes down he says yeah you have a mental issue this person has a mental issue they're mentally unwell you know you need to just give them some tablets and they'll be fine and then you get these guys if you're fine and healthy by the time you go to them 
they will make sure that you're not healthy by the time you leave. The way these guys uh, work is of many different types and we're going to see some examples. These are the um, shells, like they have seashells or, or small shells and small seeds and they throw them down onto a piece of cloth or a piece of material and then they see where they land and they tell you something is wrong with you or something is not wrong with you or something is going to happen to you. Likewise, using cardamom seeds, using date stones, they have many, many, many variations. Likewise, writing on the sand. So they have a tray of sand and some sort of symbols appear in the sand. Now, how do these symbols appear in the sand? I can tell you now it's not Jibreel who is writing them. I and mean, it's the jinn without a shadow of a doubt. And then they say, look, something is written in the sand. If it's written this way, it's this. If it's written this way, it's this. And they have many different, uh, they have uh, this thing with ash. They burn some stuff and they throw they uh, they throw some you know water in it and whatever and how the ash lies that's how they determine what is wrong with a person and likewise the use of these candles and we saw these in the video with the magician so we see these people who are out there misguiding individuals and from these people are those people who do istikhara for you istikhara is something that is commonly misunderstood istikhara is very simple you ask Allah, oh Allah, you know everything, I know nothing. If this is good for me, make it easy. If it's not good for me, take me away for it and give me something better and make me content with what you gave me. That's the summary of the dua of istikhara. We have had people who have been possessed because of istikhara that was done for them by Molana in Pakistan. And Molana Saab in Pakistan, subhanallah, managed to send his ruh. Subhanallah, we had, a, we had a brother, he said, yeah, the, the Shaykh, he visited us from Pakistan. I said, MashaAllah, he came all the way from Pakistan to visit you. He said, no, he's still there. We said, what do you mean? He, ca yeah, he came, he's been in our house and he's seen our house and he's actually been around our house. He's fought the jinn in our house, he removed the jinn. I'm thinking this guy flew on a plane and did Rukya. They said, no, he sent his soul. He took his ruh out of his body and he sent his ruh from Pakistan to come and remove the jinn from our house. And this is a person who advertises himself as doing istikhara for marriage. That's what he does. I do istikhara for you and I tell you whether your marriage is going to work out or it's not going to work out. When in reality, he sent a jinn to the house and this sister was possessed by that jinn because of the istikhara that the family did to find out whether her marriage would be successful or not successful. So this is a very serious issue. Now this leads us nicely into the issue of astrology and stargazing. And all of the magic that you see has a strong link to astrology and stargazing. Don't think that the two are separate. The two are one and the same, they benefit from each other. They are based upon each other. And we know this from the statement of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah. Ibn Abbas said, a group of people, yaktubuna abajad, they write abjad, and we're going to talk about abjad, the abjad alphabet, they write in code. Yanzuruna fin nujum, and then they look into the stars. I do not think that these people have anything in the hereafter. Ibn Abbas knew the reality of how magic works. Because most magicians, they use astrology and the zodiac as an integral part of the magic that they do. Let's have a look at this in more detail. They essentially divide people into one of four categories okay and these four categories are based upon the signs of the zodiac and this is kufr and this is kathib it's falsehood and batil but this is how they work this is mentally how the magician produces the amulet they divide people into four categories according to the sign of the zodiac but not by birth we're going to talk about this, not by birth. They don't do it by birthday, i.e. you're Gemini because you were born in June or July or whatever. You're this because you were born. They do it by a calculation. When they get your zodiac sign, they divide you into fire, water, air and earth. 
fire, water, air and earth and based upon what they calculate they would then tailor the magic to the element that you are considered to be closest to so if you are calculated as being from the earth element they will bury your magic in the ground and if you are calculated as being from the air element they would tie it to a bird or to a tree if they calculate you as being a fire person they would command you to burn or command incense to be burned and papers to be burned and if they calculated you to be a water person they would put your magic in the sewer in the toilet in the drain in the sea in the river in order for it to activate now all of this is falsehood however it is falsehood with a purpose it's not random it's done with a clear purpose and in the, in the extent that the magic is the most effective and the jinn are the most obedient to the magician when they fulfill these conditions of dividing people into an element and then producing magic that is tailored to the element that you are